In this video, we're going to talk about how to solve a 3 by 3 system using technology with matrices. So this video is going to show you how to do this in Desmos. So today we're going to learn how to solve systems that look like this. And if you remember, we already learned how to solve systems that look like this algebraically. So today we're going to be learning a second method, which is called using matrices with Kramer's rule. So if a 3 by 3 system has one solution, remember that solution will be represented by an ordered triple, which is x, y, z. So what we're going to do today is turn a 3 by 3 system of linear equations into a matrix equation that we can solve using our graphing calculators. So what is a matrix? A matrix is a rectangular arrangement of numbers in m rows and n columns. The dimensions of a matrix with m rows and n columns are m by n. So you can see here, I have a matrix that has two rows and three columns. So this is a two by three matrix. So an entry in a matrix is called an element of a matrix. A matrix can be named by a capital letter A. So you can see here we have matrix A and notice that four is an element of matrix A. So here are the steps we're gonna to use to solve a three by three system using Kramer's rule. We're gonna start off by making sure that all our equations are in standard form. Then we'll set up the coefficient matrix A and note its dimensions. And then we'll set up the constant matrix B and also make sure to note its dimensions. Then using Kramer's rule, we're gonna solve the system of equations. So standard form of a linear equation in three variables is looks like this, okay? So we have all our variables on the left side of the equation and notice that all the variables are in alphabetical order, right? We have X, Y, and then Z. And then our constant term will be on the right side of the equation. So 2x minus 3y plus 4z equals 7 is in standard form. Also remember the parts of an equation. So the number that multiplies the variable is called the coefficient. So in this case, 3 is the coefficient of x. The number that's by itself is called a constant. So in this case, 4 would be a constant. So let's work on solving the system by setting up the matrices. So we're gonna start off by setting up the coefficient matrix. So we're gonna call this matrix A, and it's just gonna contain all the coefficients of the variables in our system. So before I do this, I like to go ahead and add in those ones that are my implied coefficients, because that just helps me keep everything in order when I'm writing out my matrix. So row one is gonna be all the coefficients of equation one. So I have two, one and negative four. Okay, so now row two is gonna be all the coefficients of equation two. So I have two, four, and two. And then row three is gonna be all the coefficients of equation three. So I have six, negative two, and four. So notice that this has three rows and three columns. So this is gonna be a three by three matrix. Now let's set up the constant matrix B. So the constant matrix is just gonna be all of these constants that are on the right side of the equation. So matrix B is gonna be seven, 40, and 44. So notice that this matrix has three rows and one column. So this is a three by one matrix. So now we're gonna write this system as a matrix equation. So what I do is I write my coefficient matrix, which was two, one, negative four, two, four, two, six, negative two, four. And that coefficient matrix multiplied by my variables, which are X, Y, Z equals my constant matrix, right? So that constant matrix is seven, 40, 44. So I can write this as a matrix equation because remember I call this matrix A and I call this matrix B. So I can say that matrix A times X, Y, Z equals my constant matrix, which is B. So now let's think about how would we solve this equation. So remember in algebra, we're always working on solving equations and trying to figure out the values of the variables. So how would we go about solving this matrix equation that I have written here? So to do this, we're gonna to need to think about what is the inverse of a matrix, right? Because remember in algebra, we always undo operations using inverse operations. So for example, if I was solving the equation x plus three equals five, I would be asking you, well, what's the inverse of adding three? Well, we know that the inverse of adding three is to subtract three from both sides, right? So when we subtract three from both sides, we get x equals two. So similarly, we're gonna do the inverse of matrix A. 
The inverse of matrix A is written like this. So you write matrix A and then you do the superscript of negative one. So if we multiply both sides of this matrix equation by the inverse of matrix A, we can actually work on solving this equation. Because what happens here is that when we multiply matrix A by its inverse, it will actually cancel this out. So we'll just be left with x, y, z equals the inverse of a times b. And that's the secret to solving this equation. So this is what it's called Kramer's rule, OK? So we have x, y, z equals the inverse of a times b. And now we're going to learn how to use our calculator to compute this, right? Because we've just set up the matrices and set up all our equations. We haven't actually gone through and solved and actually figured out the values of x, y, z. So what we're going to do is we're going to enter matrix A in our calculator. So remember, we can use the Desmos matrix calculator, and you can pull that up by going to desmos.com. And instead of clicking on graphing calculator, you're going to go up here to math tools, and you're going to open the matrix calculator. OK, and so that's how you can get the matrix calculator to open. So we're going to start off by entering matrix A. So you're going to go down here and click on new matrix. So now we need to tell it the dimensions of our new matrix. So we're going to go down here and use the plus to create three rows and the plus to create three columns. So now we'll go ahead and type in the values. So you can click the buttons here to enter the values. And then when you want to advance to the next entry, you can use this arrow button here in Desmos, or you can use the arrow on your keyboard. So I'm going to go ahead and I like to do this by clicking the numbers in Desmos and using the arrows on my keyboard. So that's how I'm going to do this. So we have then negative 4, and then 2, 4, 2, and then 6, negative 2, and 4. OK, so always double check and make sure you've entered everything in correctly. And so now let's enter matrix B. So we're going to click New Matrix, and it automatically creates matrix B. So we need to tell it to create a 3 by 1 matrix. So I'm going to adjust the number of rows to 3 and decrease the number of columns to 1. And now we enter the value. So I do 7, and then I do my right arrow, and then 40, and then 44. OK, so now that we have matrix A and matrix B, we need to apply Kramer's rule. So we're going to click Enter, and then I'm going to have it call back matrix A. OK, so I'm going to use this A button right here. And then you can see down here this button that has A inverse. When I click that, it computes the inverse of matrix A. OK, so you can see this is the matrix that's actually the inverse of A. But I don't just want to find the inverse of A, right? I need to multiply it by matrix B. So when I click B, it just automatically does that. OK, so it gives me the solution, which is 7, 5, 3. OK, so that's the order triple that is the solution to my system of equations. So now let's practice with some examples. So let's work on setting up the coefficient matrix and the constant matrix, and then using Kramer's rule in our calculator to complete solutions. So remember, I like to start off by adding in those implied ones. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So the coefficient matrix A is going to be 1, 1, 1. And next row, I have 2, 4, negative 1. And then in the third row, I have 2, negative 4, and 2. Okay, so I have three rows and three columns, so this is a 3 by 3 matrix. Now let's go ahead and do matrix B. Okay, so our constant matrix, and that's going to be these three values right here. So I have 6, 7, and 0. Okay, and that's my 3 by 1 matrix. So now remember, I need to do my A inverse times B in Desmos. So I'm going to go back to my calculator, I'm going to click clear. And that just clears one row. But if I click Clear All, it'll just clear everything out. So once again, I go to New Matrix. And then Matrix A, I'm going to say three rows and three columns. And then I'm going to enter my values. So I have 1, 1, 1, and then 2, 4, negative 1, and then 2, negative 4, and 2. And then I'm going to click New Matrix and then enter Matrix B. Remember, that needs to be 3 by 1, so I can go ahead and adjust that. And then I have 6, 7, and 0. OK, so now I'm going to hit Enter, and then I'm going to choose Matrix A, and then the Inverse button, and then Matrix B, and it computes the solution for me. OK, so the order triple is going to be 1, 2, 3. 
So now let's try this example. So once again, we're going to start off by setting up the coefficient matrix A. So the matrix A is going to be first row, we have 4, 5, negative 6. And then in the second row, we have 3, negative 2, and 7. And then in the third row, we have 7, negative 6, and negative 8. Okay, so once again, it's a 3 by 3 matrix. And then let's do the constant matrix. So we have matrix B which is going to be negative 14, and then 47, and 15. Okay, and that is going to be a 3 by 1 matrix. So once again, I'm going to go to my calculator, and I'm going to clear all, and start over with matrix A. So three rows, three columns, and now let's enter the values. So we have 4, 5, negative 6, 3, negative 2, 7 and 7, negative 6, negative 8. Now new matrix again, and then do matrix B. So I'm going to increase a row and then decrease a column. So I have 3 by 1, negative 14, 47, and 15. OK, so now I'm going to hit Enter. And then I'm going to choose matrix A and then the inverse button, and then matrix B and it gives me the solution to the system of equations. So the solution is going to be 5, negative 2, 4. So now let's try this example. So we have another system of equations. So we're going to go ahead and set up the coefficient matrix. So first row will be 10, 3, 2. Second row will be 7, 6, 2. And my third row will be 4, negative 3, and 3. OK, so that's a 3 by 3 matrix. And now let's do matrix B, my constant matrix. So that will be 5, 20, and 7. And that is a 3 by 1 matrix. So now let's go back to our calculator and clear all and do new matrix. And then matrix A needs to be three rows and three columns. So let's enter those values. We have 10, 3, 2, 7, 6, 2, and 4, negative 3, and 3. So new matrix and then matrix B needs to have three rows and one column. So we have 5, 20, and 7. OK, so hit Enter. And then we do A, and then inverse, and then matrix B. OK, so that gives us our solution. So our solution will be negative 2, 3, and 8. So now you can go ahead and pause the video and try doing this example on your own. So here I have the solution to the system of equations. The order triple is negative 5, 1, 2. So I just started off by setting up the coefficient matrix that you can see here. And then I entered it as matrix A. And then I set up the constant matrix. And then I did A inverse times B. And it gave me the solution. So if for some reason you type in something incorrectly or you notice, like, for example, suppose you had typed in a negative 2 or something here, all you need to do in Desmos is you just click on that entry. And then you can just edit it from this screen. OK, and when you edit it, it automatically updates everything. You see it fixed my solution. So I just wanted to point that out. OK, so using technology with matrices and Kramer's rule, you can solve a 3 by 3 system of linear equations. If a 3 by 3 system has a solution, it will be represented as an order triple, which is x, y, z.